Hey everybody, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Thanks for joining me. This is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. Get the play on words. Naturally, I want to keep you well and get you get you well and keep you well. And naturally, see, a little play on words here. Good friend of mine, Phil Cutno, is a brilliant advertiser. We used to uh, uh, run a company together years ago called Doctors Chiropractic Exchange. And uh, we want an Addy, actually. I don't know if you know what Addy is. An Addy is the, uh, the equivalent of an Oscar, an Emmy, in advertising. And uh, Phil Cutno, Bob Lewis, and I ran this company, and we would advertise uh, for getting uh, advertising chiropractic on, on radio stations and TV around the country. And um, that was our catchphrase. Naturally, we want to get you well and keep you well. So I, I, Phil, unfortunately, passed away, but I'm paying homage to Phil here when I say that. Great man. A lot of people don't know that, so I thought I'd tell you. In fact, Ahmad, you did not know that. I did not. So you t- see, learned something now new. you learned something new there. We had Johnny answering the calls today. If you have a question, we're going to open up the lines. It's 844 44 Dr. Joe, 844 44 Dr. Joe. And today we're talking about signs and symptoms that you're not healthy. Because a lot of times patients come into my offices, I've been doing this for 32 years now, and they'll say, you know, Dr. Joe, I want to get rid of these bags under my eyes because I, it doesn't make me look pretty or handsome or whatever it is. And I'll tell them, you know, that, those bags under your eyes are a symptom that something's wrong. And I'll go, what do you mean? And I'll say, well, bags under your eyes are a sign of adrenal fatigue. And then I'll go through some other signs that they might have adrenal problems. And they'll say, well, yeah, you know, I do have that. And I do have that. So what we're going to do today is talk about things that you might have that you don't realize are actually a symptom. And one of them, I'm, I'm going to cover this a little later, is pain. If you have pain, that's telling you something's wrong. And with any of the things we're going to talk about today, we can either cover it up or we can fix it. And I prefer to fix it, of course. But a lot of times we go through our lives covering it up. So you want to keep an eye on your health. Spend a few minutes scrutinizing your body in the mirror. Are your eyes pink? Your nails turn brown on the top? You notice small changes um, in your body shape? These could be symptoms that there's actually something wrong. So little trivial signs are often just that. It's nothing to worry about. In fact, I remember when I was studying x-ray uh, years ago. I've, I've read hundreds of thousands of x-rays since then. But my professor said, listen, don't dream up things. You're looking at a black and white negative of a body with little lines and there's gas patterns and fat rolls. And they said, don't dream up things. But you got to know what abnormal is so that you can then do something about it. So don't look at every inch of your body and say, that's not right, that's not right. But some of the things we're going to talk about are real obvious. And if they persist, especially combined with other symptoms, you want to get them taken care of. So one of the big questions I get, Dr. Joe, why don't you have any gray hair? So premature graying could be a medical condition. If you have 50% gray hair by the time you're age 40, you should probably be checked for diabetes. Probably didn't know that, did you? Now, I started going little gray, very little, and I did a hair analysis. Now, we do this in our office. It's real simple, and you can even we can send you the kit if you wanted to, and you can mail in your hair. But you cut off a little bit of hair, and you could use it from any part of your body. And you cut off a little bit of hair, and you send, we send it off to the lab, and they do an analysis on you, and they determine if you have heavy metal toxicity, if you're lacking nutrients. And it turns out that I was deficient in selenium. So I started taking selenium supplements, and sure enough, all my gray hair went away. Now, that worked for me. I'm not saying you're, de- is suffi- uh, you're deficient in selenium. I don't know if you are. But my few gray hairs led me to the hair analysis, which led me to get that result. So that was kind of cool. Uh, so start thinking about that. Gray hair could be a sign that something's wrong. Now, you can try to cover it up. You can dye it. You can you know, put things in there. But it's a good idea to find out why. And we've had other patients as well. One of my friends is, uh, was totally gray, and, I, got, and I, I, I just got him on selenium supplements. Again, I don't know if that's your problem, so don't run out and get selenium supplements. It may, you may be wasting your time and your money. But he started taking it, and sure enough, um, he went to salt and pepper, from totally white to salt and pepper. So there's something to that. Look at your skin. Crusty blemishes. Uh, keratosis, it's called. Usually benign. Nothing to worry about. But dark ones often run in families. Those are harmless. You have these crusty things. Solar keratosis, however, is triggered by the sun damage and could be an early sign of skin cancer. So seek advice. It's a good idea. Now, you can go online and look at pictures of moles, and you can go online and look at pictures of skin conditions that are cancerous. Uh, I'm Italian. Um, my mother used to call them something, but was derogatory toward Italians. I'm not offended by it, but there might be Italians out there offended by it. But skin tags and moles, and um, I had one on my leg, and I remember years ago I was dating this gal, and, and it was on my thigh, and she said, you need to get that checked. And I didn't want to go, and I didn't want to go, and I didn't want to go. 
And I said, it's been like that since I was in high school. She said, go get it checked. I went and got it checked. The dermatologist looked at it and said, it's fine. Nothing to worry about. Has it ever changed? I said, no. But if you have moles or, or skin, uh, skin issues and they start to change shape, they get irregular borders around them, uh, if they start to bleed, these are signs that you definitely want to get it checked. Hopefully, it's nothing to worry about. But if it is an issue, we do. Folks, going to have to go to a break. If you have a question, our phones are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, lots of good information there, by the way. We archive our radio shows there, too. Uh, DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. And uh, that number, 844-44-DR-JOE, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. But you can call it now if you have any questions. Hey, tell your friends about the show. I'll be right back. I am so happy that you're here today, and this is the show, uh, No Nonsense Health Advice. We're going to give you the things that you need to do to naturally get well and stay well. So we're talking about today are signs and symptoms that you may have that are something's wrong, and I don't want you to ignore these things. Short eyebrows. This is an interesting one. Losing hair from the outer edge of your eyebrows is a sign of an underactive thyroid. It thins the hair on your head, too. So again, one sign, probably not a big deal. But when you start to put it all together, that's when you start to see problems. I know I was working in my postgraduate degree in orthopedics. Uh, my teacher, uh, Rick Ackerman, he said, everything's a puzzle. And one piece doesn't make a puzzle. you got to start putting it together. So if you have things like trouble losing weight, if you have weak eyebrows or light eyebrows, especially losing it on the outside, um, if you start losing your hair, go get your thyroid checked. It's no big deal. You get a little blood drawn, they test your thyroid, and if there's a problem, you need to fix it. Now, there are alternative ways to fix it. There are supplements that I would probably recommend first because I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not going to give you drugs. Uh, but sometimes you need medication, and I'm not against you taking medication, and I'm not against surgery. I'm against unnecessary use of drugs and surgery. That's where we start to have problems, and this is why the show is so popular all around the world. We're heard coast to coast and, and, and around the world because a lot of doctors listen to the show and they go, oh, well, I didn't know that. So it's kind of fun. All right, we got lots of callers. If you have a question, 844-44-Dr. Joe. we got a lot of content. We've got a lot of callers, too. Jan, how can we make your day better? Hi, thanks for taking my call. You are welcome. Um, I had went through chemo and radiation and now have uh, peripheral neuropathy in my feet yes. all the time. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if anything can be done about that. The answer is yes. How about that? Oh. Isn't that a nice way to start your day? Oh, my goodness, yeah. Okay. All right, a couple of things. And with the chemo, of course, chemo is chemicals, and it kills the cancer cells, but it also affects your nervous system. Yeah. So the peripheral neuropathy, peripheral means around the outside. Neuropathy is nerve pain, um, which all pain is nerve pain, by the way. Um, so if you're having peripheral neuropathy, we may have done some damage to the nerves. Now, the good news is peripheral nerves can rehabilitate themselves and regenerate. So a couple of things I would do. Number one, the first thing I would do is check the nerves in the low back because the nerves in the low back are the nerves that go into your legs. So it could be not a chemical problem. could be a physical problem. You might have a pinched nerve in the low back. And if we unpinch as a chiropractor, of course, that's what we do. We put the bones back in place, open up the nerve supply into the legs, and that should help tremendously if that's the problem. Okay. If it's not, the doc hopefully a good chiropractor will tell you, listen, you don't have pinched nerves in your low back. Let's look at the chemistry. So chemo depletes the body of a ton of nutrients. Yeah. So you've got to be really strict about what you eat. This is not a game at this point, Jan. This is serious now. Mm. You have to be really careful. I would suggest four things, and there's about 120,000 choices in this four, four food groups. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So if you could eat mostly fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, you're going to load your body up with nutrients. I, I, go ahead. I you, have a slight problem with that because after the chemo and radiation, they said I needed a colon resection. Uh -huh. As a result of that, I have very loose bowels and no longer can eat the same fruits, vegetables, and nuts that I used to. What if I could solve that problem for you? Would you like me? That would be awesome. Okay, I want to be your new best friend, Jan. I created a supplement a while ago, two supplements, called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. And what they are is like su essential source. We juice fruits and vegetables, take the water out at a very low temperature. So now we have essentially almost zero fiber. Mm -hmm. So you're getting one scoop is about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables. Wow. Then you add, we add prebiotics and probiotics, which are good bacteria for your colon, then a complete multivitamin. 
and it's a powder, and it actually tastes really good. I have it sitting in front of me right here at the studio. And then I would also suggest you add uh, Dr. Joe's uh, uh, Super Greens because we need to alkalize your system because cancer cells don't like an alkaline environment. They like an acid environment. Right. So if we can alkalize your system, give you the benefits of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds without the fiber, mm -hmm. now your body has the ability to start to heal. Hmm. Okay? And, and with, with the colon, I'd also check to see if your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm because a lot of times after surgery, the colon spasms. We need to gently massage the colon to get it to come out of spasm. And then we check the nerve supply from the spine. We check to see if there's spasms, get you on good, you know, good food and good supplements, and now your body has a real good chance of healing. That sounds wonderful. Okay, and if you want the supplements, of, this is not just for you, Jen. It's for everybody listening. Uh, Super Green is an essential source. I think everybody should be taking them, almost everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or if you go to uh, Amazon, we have a page there. You can get them relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. And I take a scoop. Today I'm, I'm doing a double dose. I've got a busy day. But a scoop of each, I take it with coconut milk. I put it in a glass jar, shake it up, and drink it. it tastes great, and it's, it's pretty amazing, I think, the results you'll see, probably in a relatively short period of time. Oh, that would be fabulous. Okay, Jen. Thank you so much for your help. My, I appreciate it. My pleasure. Glad I could be of help to you. Yeah, folks, the Super Green is the essential source. If you're new to the show, you may have never heard me talk about them, but those things rock. I mean, it did just really, it's the minimum amount of nutrients that your body needs to get the body working. And then with my patients, I do a nutritional workup. We can do this over the phone, too, if we need to. And we put together a whole protocol of nutrition for you, eating the right foods. I, I, I give, give people CDs, The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition, which, by the way, are on my website, too. It's a, a, a video that I did. And we have another one. If you sign up for my newsletter on my website, I'll send you one called So What Can I Eat? It's all free. And we teach you what to eat, what not to eat. Really good stuff there. Um, and, and then we put together a supplement protocol, super greens and essential source, but then specific ones for your specific needs. Ross, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, you take such good care of us, man. We appreciate well, you, Doc. Thank you, Ross. I appreciate those kind words. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Dr. Joe, I was in a uh, health food store, and, you know, I was asking a couple of questions, and the main one was about, you know, just keeping the arteries clean, keeping, you know, just everything clean because everybody get a lot of stop up and oh, yeah. block it and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, you know, one guy, he was saying the best thing I can get would be some cayenne pepper. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, so now I'm called and I come to the master and ask your opinion, sir. Yeah, cayenne pepper is great because it's a vasodilator. Vaso means vessel, dilate means to open. Uh, cayenne pepper is oh. great. If you like the flavor, eat it. If not, you can put it in a capsule. Um, of uh -huh. course, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source will help the body as well. Um, and also you can, you can do some beet powder. Get some organic beet powder. And uh -huh. I, I mix it in with the Super Greens, the Essential Source. And when you take it, swish it around in your mouth because the nitrates in the beet powder interact with saliva and the chemicals in your mouth to create nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels. So wow. it's just another wow. fun little tip, relatively inexpensive. Um, and I just added to the Super Greens, the Essential Source. But what you'll do is when you do that, you open up the blood vessels to your brain, your arms, your legs, mm -hmm. your reproductive organs, something guys have issues with as they get older. And that stuff's pretty amazing. And then you got to stay away from what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. When you Absolutely, can... absolutely. Thanks again, Dr. Joe. Appreciate you. My pleasure, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, when you stop putting the bad stuff in and you start putting the good stuff in, that's when the body starts to heal. And the cool part is it happens so fast. It's not like, well, it's going to take me three years of eating well. No, as soon as you stop putting the bad stuff in and you start eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, you start to see some dramatic changes, which is really cool. And then people get excited, and they want to do more and more of it. So, folks, if you have a healthcare question, the number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, archive hundreds of hours of radio shows, videos of my lectures. Hey, check out my live lectures. Got a lot of live lectures coming up. If I'm in your area, I'd love to have you come out. Uh, and that's on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Uh, and also our supplements, my books, that's all on uh, Amazon as well. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, glad you're here. This is the show that's going to turn your life around. One thing we all have in common is we all have health problems. And no matter what you do, male, female, black, white, tall, skinny, short, fat, we all have health issues. And the problem is that we don't know where to turn for them. And so that's why this show exists. This show is here to help you get well and stay well. And we archive hundreds of hours of shows on my website, drjoesposito.com. 
And that's, by the way, no charge. What we're talking about today, signs that you're not healthy. These are things that you probably looked at every day of your life and said, yeah, it's no big deal. It's really not that big an issue. But I want you to consider that maybe it is a warning sign. So look at these warning signs and move on them. If you have hooded eyelids, baggy eyelids on top, it might give that sultry look. You might think that's a pretty cool thing. But it could cause more, uh, it could be more than just aging or family trait. If they droop too much, they can actually impair your sight. And this is the one time an insurance company would actually pay for a facelift, in case you didn't know that. Uh, bad breath. This is something I want you to know, because we've all done this, right? You're talking to somebody, and their breath just stunk. And you're thinking, man, what's wrong with this person? Right, Ahmad? You've never had that happen to you, ever. Never. No, you're talking to a nice, pretty girl one day, and she stinks oh, like man. New Jersey. And I <laughs> oh, that's not a good combination. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I can say that. Yeah, but, I mean, we all do that. Now, there's a couple of things that can cause bad breath, and I want you to know that many times bad breath is a warning sign. So if it smells like rot, it usually means it's a tooth, and it has a certain, a very strong, pungent smell to it. If it smells like bowel, now, we've all had that before. You're thinking, God, did this person, like, they, they, got, they got bathroom breath. I'm trying to keep it clean here. That could be a sign that the digestive system is in great peril. The digestive system isn't working properly, so the food is actually rotting in their colon. When the food rots in the colon, it can get into you. The smell can get into your blood system. When the blood passes through the lungs and the air is exchanged, oxygen is exchanged, it, then that smell comes out through the lungs. So if you smell somebody that has a potty breath, that's usually a sign of really serious digestive problems. Now, what could that be? Number one could be constipation, very common, because most people don't have bowel movements two to three times a day like they're supposed to. Yes, I said a day, not a week, not a month, a day, because food in should mean food out. And if that food is sitting there too long, it rots. And the gases that are given off then eventually come out through the lungs. So if the bowels aren't moving, it could be a bad diet, which is the most obvious thing, not enough fiber and eating mostly what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So we got to make sure the bowels are working properly. It could be a pinched nerve. The nerves in the low back might cause back, hip, leg, knee, and foot pain, but a pinched nerve in the low back can also lead to things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary, sexual problems, because the nerves in the low back control the colon, sex organs, and bladder. Oh, interesting. We've had a lot of patients, especially babies, when they're constipated, we adjust them, and boom, they just open up. Adults, sometimes it takes a little more than that. It could be what's called a hiatal hernia. The stomach is spasmed and pushing up into the diaphragm. When the stomach pushes up into the diaphragm, we need to manually massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, chronic cough, sinus problems, it could be the, the, the stomach acid coming up into the esophagus and all the way up into the sinuses. So we, in our offices, we manually massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm because I'd pretty much say every day in our offices, somebody comes in with this problem and they're taking medication, which sometimes is necessary, but we tell them it could be this. We test it. Sure enough, we pull the stomach down and after a few visits, they're like, I don't need the medication anymore. Because the medication for acid reflux, unfortunately, can prevent you from absorbing calcium, magnesium, B12, and iron. So now we go into nutritional deficiencies. So, it, it, so if you're having that potty breath, it could be something along those lines. And then once you fix the stomach, many times the bowels start working. And one more thing, there's a valve in between your belly button and your right hip. It's called the ileocecal valve. And if that valve is stuck closed, it can cause constipation. If it's stuck open, it can cause diarrhea. So the smell of somebody's breath can be a real strong indicator as to what's wrong with their body. And if it's a dental issue, folks, that's out of my, my, that's out of my wheelhouse. You're going to have to get yourself to a dentist. And we work with a lot of good dentists. Get to the dentist and get it fixed. If it's a bowel issue, people may go to the dentist. Dentist can't fix that. Then we might be something we need to adjust the spine, work on the stomach, get the diet straightened out. I have a, a supplement I created. It's called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. And this stuff is great. If the bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, you can take these and it very gently gets the bowels moving. It's not like it's, oh, I can't leave the house. It's very gentle to get things moving along. So consider that, that if you have a symptom like that, there's something wrong. If you have a healthcare question, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. 
Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com, if you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, my books, Eating Right for the Health of It, Prescription for Extreme Health, Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser, but lots of really good stuff on the website, archive radio shows, articles that I've written. Sign up for my newsletter, by the way, and when you do, I'm going to send you a link, no charge, um, to a lecture I did called So What Can I Eat? And it tells you what you can eat. That's no charge. And I videotape my live lectures, too, and we put them on the website. Check the website for the live lectures, folks. Got a lot of them coming up in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, I'm in your area, and uh, you can come out and see me. Look in your eyes. The eyes are the gateway to the soul. If your eyes aren't bright white, could mean you're tired, could mean you're hungover, could be you're just made that way. But watch out for the whites when they start to turn a little yellow, especially when you run down. This could be a sign of something called Gilbert syndrome. This is when bilirubin builds up in the blood. Bilirubin is a waste uh, part of the, the, the liver, and it can cause jaundice. So if you start getting yellow eyes, it's almost always a liver issue. And the liver is a big problem because everything you eat has to go through your digestive system and eventually goes through your liver. Everything that goes in your body goes through your liver. And so the liver has to filter out all this junk. And if you're constantly abusing your liver, which a lot of you are, what happens is the liver starts to build up fatty deposits. And we get what's called a fatty liver. Now, when I went to school, I was taught that fatty liver 100% of the time was alcoholic. That was a diagnosis. person was an alcoholic. Now we're finding fatty liver in five-year-olds. Because kids are eating so much sugar. And the sugar, especially high fructose corn syrup, can actually lead to fatty liver. So, folks, if you have a health care question, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, if you have questions, by the way, you can send them to me through the website. If you don't get on the air today, I know a lot of times people call up and can't get on. Send me your questions through the website. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. If you want to order my supplements, Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, those are also on the website, drjoesposito.com or on Amazon. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back to the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be. I am so glad that you're spending a little time with me. Thank you so much. I know everybody's got a busy schedule, so thanks so much for being here. I do appreciate that. Uh, somebody just sent me a message on Facebook. Oh, you, by the way, you can set, you can uh, like me on Facebook or follow me on Facebook. I should say uh, Facebook slash Dr. Joe Esposito. We send out a lot of good information on Facebook too. That's a good way to stay in touch. Uh, also follow me on, uh, Instagram, follow me on Instagram. We just started doing that. We're coming into the, the modern age here. So look me up, follow me on Instagram. It's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of folks will ask me for second opinions. They'll come into our offices. They'll send me questions on my website. I'm more than happy to help you in any way I possibly can. We're talking today about uh, symptoms, different signs and symptoms that you might be having that might actually be a warning sign of something bigger. Uh, pink eye, this is common. It's a, it's a common name for conjunctivitis. Uh, one of my doctors had it a while ago, not long ago, and she, you know, it goes away in time. It's easy. Uh, you can do some things like extra virgin coconut oil, kind of rub it around the eye because the coconut oil is antiviral. Um, Somebody suggested one time, I, I had them do this, is get some garlic juice and just rub it around the bottom of the eye. But don't get the garlic juice in your eye because you will wake up. If the pink eye persists, conjunct conjunctivitis, you might want to get tested for chlamydia because that can cause inflammation of the eye as well. So just a little fun fact there for you. You might be watching your significant other now going, hmm, is their eye red? I wonder what that is. So. Uh, creased earlobes. Study from the American Journal of Medicine revealed a, a, a diagonal crease can up the risk of heart disease by a third to, to as much as 77% if both lobes are effective. The theory is that the line shows a lack of elasticity, which can affect the arteries. The culprit could also be aging. So earlobe creases probably increase with age, but so does the likelihood of heart disease. But if you see those earlobe creases, you might want to consider being careful. Now, how about this? How about you just consider being careful? That's a much better approach. I always figure I want to do everything I can to be as healthy as I can and stay as young as I can for as long as I can. And then I don't have to worry about, well, gosh, is that a earlobe crease an issue with my heart? My not, not, not for my heart. Just assume the worst and then act the best. Let's keep taking some callers. Mike, how can we make your day better? Hey, doctor. After uh, experiencing some pulmonary symptoms, it was discovered that in my sleeping quarters, I've been exposed to rhizopus type mold, oh, yeah. which causes zygomycosis. Mm -hmm. um, the, and we're in the early phases of diagnosing this, but um, and I have it has been determined though that I have uh, bronchiolites or something like that, and then also my um, globulin, the GGG reading or whatever that is, is sure. down 
in the like lower 400s when it should be over 600. Right. Now, my question is basically this, twofold. Uh, first one is, uh, when I get through with this, if you could recommend a medical facility who specializes in that, this, though I've had good treatment and very good doctors, they don't seem to be familiar with this. But then secondly, is there something I can do in my diet to inhibit mold growth? Uh, I know there was a book out years ago called The Yeast Connection. Um, anything that, uh, from a uh, nutrition standpoint that might help me? Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of things, actually. Because with the mold, you have to have a strong immune system. And so many people have mold issues. In fact, uh, I have a friend of mine. She lives up on a lake. And a lot of people in the area have a lot of problems, heart disease and cancer, yeah. and they die a lot. I mean, a lot of people are passing, passing away up there. And I thought that same thing. I wonder if it's just mold being so close to the lake. Um, so, yeah, mold is a big issue. You've got to build up the immune system. So absolutely, positively, no sugar. And when I say sugar, that's breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Those got to go. Because uh-huh. sugar blows out your immune system. In my most recent book, uh, Prescription for Extreme Health, I talk about that. How one white blood cell can usually kill off about 14 different pathogens before it dies. And if you drink uh, as little as a soda, that one white blood cell can now kill one pathogen before it dies. Mm -hmm. So no sugar for you, absolutely. Certain things will stimulate the immune system. Uh, We have certain supplements. I use a company called Standard Process that I would recommend. But you can use olive leaf extract. Garlic is going to be something really good for you to keep the immune system strong. Uh, sleep, of course, is going to be huge. Dr. Joe's Supergreens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source are spectacular for keeping the immune system strong. And now we've got to fight it off because if the mold is set up shop inside your body, it's an issue. Here's one more test you can do, Mike. Get a glass, of, a clear glass of water. Put it next to your bed tonight. When you wake up right. tomorrow morning, you get a big mouthful of spit and spit into the glass. Wait up to an hour. But if you start to see little uh, things come down, looks like a man of war tentacles, like coming down mm-hmm. out of the spit. That could be a sign yeah. of a yeast infection. And if you have the yeast infection, then you got to work real hard to get rid of that. Um, there's a good company, uh, Solaray, actually. They have a good thing called Yeast Cleanse, but there's several on the market that would work. Uh, uh, do you think that an antioxidant, we'll say like palm juice or anything like that, is, is uh, I mean, I, I take that somewhat on a regular basis, but any need to up, up that a little bit or anything? Um, those are all good. Antioxidants are fine, but they're more for free radicals, um, and okay. that, which, which can help, of mm-hmm. course. But I really want to get to you something on antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal type stuff, which would be garlic, olive leaf extract, uh, echinacea. Um, I do echinacea just about every day. Make sure your vitamin D levels are where they need to be. You want to, get about, oh. you want to measure that if you can next time you do blood work. Um, get about okay. 10 or 15 minutes of sunlight every day. That's going to give you, get your vitamin D levels up. Um, because without the vitamin D, the other stuff, the immune system just poops out. So, okay. And then, of course, chiropractic care, when you adjust people, it stimulates the immune system as well. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Okay. Well, uh, I may just give you guys a call out in Marietta, see if I can set up an appointment and come out and uh, have a skull session with you. And uh, what is your uh, website again, just Dr. Uh, Joe? Do- just if you Google Dr. Joe, but drjoesposito.com, yeah. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, Thanks, Mike. appreciate it. My Thank pleasure. You. Let's, uh, let's take another call. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. Aaron, how can we help you today? Uh, yes. Um, um, my wife recently had uh, a gastric sleeve done. Uh-huh. And, um, and right after surgery, she woke up with immense shoulder pain, yep. which was mm-hmm. attributed to gas. Right. Uh, the problem is the shoulder pain is still there. We had an MRI done this week. The results came back that she had a bone spur. Okay. Um, so anyway, that that's that's not even the question. I'm just giving you the whole history. Sure. But uh, okay. One minute. Go ahead. But okay. Um, she still cannot hold. We're two months into it. She still cannot hold anything down. Sure. Okay. Um, but she's vomiting four or five times a day. Yeah. Well, a couple of things. And, um, you know, what probably happened is the stomach pushed up through the diaphragm. She got a hiatal hernia out of it, which is really common after a gastric sleeve type thing. Um, so if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, look under articles and read the article that I wrote on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and that'll explain to you the technique we use in our office that gently massages the stomach down away from the diaphragm. Um, well, they have checked. Uh, they, they, they recently did a CAT scan, and they did something else. They've checked for all that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, it may be a, uh, what's called a sliding hiatal hernia. I've seen it a lot. Uh, why don't you hold on one second, okay? I'll, I'll grab you one, w- at the break. 
So, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. If you have a health care question, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my office when I'm not on the air. If you want to get my super greens, my essential source, drjoesposito.com. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, glad you could be here. This is the show that gives you the tools so that you can take control of your own health. A lot of folks have an insurance plan, but they don't have a health care plan. And so when people say my health insurance, meh, that's two different things. Your health is what you have to do to keep yourself healthy, and then you have that insurance in case you need some outside source help. Uh, so I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and this show is heard coast to coast and around the world, and we're really glad you could be here. So today, we're talking about signs and symptoms that you might have that could be leading to something more serious, and I don't want you to ignore them. Because so many times, people come into our offices, and I've been, doing, I've been in practice now for 32 years, and the biggest complaint I get, by far, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer all these years? And a lot of times you don't know it's an issue. So the one thing I want you to realize right away that if you have pain and it persists for more than three days, something's wrong. So I want you to think about that. Gosh, I've had this neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches for two years, five years, 10 years, 20, 30 years. Pain is just a warning sign. It's your body's way of saying, hey, Joe, take a look at this. Something's wrong. And when you ignore it, it's a problem. Now, I have no problem if you take some medication to cover it up, but I want you to understand that that's just treating the symptom. I want you to also get to the cause. Flushed face, red cheeks and nose, it's called rosacea, often affects women between the ages of 30 and 55. Things like stress, sun, spicy foods, they can open up your blood vessels. So you want to just be careful with that. But rosacea can affect the eyes and is sometimes confused with lupus. So lupus is an autoimmune condition where the body starts attacking itself. So just be careful with that. If you start seeing things around the face, uh, it's called a butterfly rash. It looks like a butterfly, two wings on either side of your face. It can be a more serious problem. You think, oh, it's just rosacea. Eh, it could be a lot more than that. And if there is an immune condition, you've got to work real hard uh, to stop putting stress on the immune system. Uh, somebody at my office uh, has an autoimmune condition, uh, actually had a transplant, and she was saying that uh, she's got to be careful not to stimulate her immune system. But I said, well, what if you just change your diet? What if you stop putting the bad stuff in? So she cut out soda. Two weeks later, I spoke to her again. She goes, my face is clear. I have absolutely no zits whatsoever. I feel much better. So when you stop putting the junk in, the immune system is now able to deal with what's going on. So imagine your immune system as, a, as an army, and you only have so many warriors, and if your warriors are busy fighting off your diet and your stress and your perfumes and your hairsprays and your colognes, and then something comes along like a virus, germ, bacteria, now we've got a real serious problem. So take the stress off the immune system. Almost instantly, you'll start to see some changes. Give the body the nutrients that it needs. Make sure you're eating a diet mostly of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source at least once a day, sometimes more, because that's the minimum amount of nutrients my body needs. I had a patient come in the other day, and she said, well, I listened to you on the radio. She said, now you know what these callers are going to say, right? You have that all pre-screened, and people do that. I said, no, not really. It's all live. When people call in, it's, I just see a little note in front of me, and it has a question, and I answer it. And she says, how does your brain work like that? And it's not that my brain is special. It's that I give it the raw materials that it needs, and I don't give it stuff that is going to clog it up. It's like a car. you got to clean out the engine, give it good gas, and it runs pretty well. Some other symptoms you might want to be careful about. Cracked lips. If you start to have cracks in the corner of your mouth, it can be sometimes caused by a shortage of B vitamins or zinc. With long-term cracks, a fungal infection can set in, and treatments for oral thrush may help but you got to get to the cause. If you have chronic crap, cracked lips, you might want to start looking at B vitamin issues. And that's why things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source has B vitamins in it. It has pretty much the minimum amount of stuff that you need for the day. That's why I like it so much. And those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, also on Amazon as well. Let's start taking some more callers here. Let's go to Kathy. How can we make your day better, Kathy? Uh, yes, sir. I was calling. I had started having like a burning tongue, um, not really a metallic taste, but foods and things I can't taste uh, so much. 
So uh, I went to my dentist, and he checked. He said it's not a dental uh, oral issue. Okay. Uh, he said go to your physician. Good. Have him do a B12. Good. Uh, there you make go. Make sure your B12's good. And did that. Uh, they did a lot of blood work, checked my B12. That's all good. Excellent. Um, so it comes and goes. Uh, okay. It's, it, it will last for months. It'll go away for a little bit, and then it'll come back. Okay. Uh, so any suggestions on what that might be? Oh, Kathy, you know I have suggestions. I have suggestions for everyone. Um, ah. <laughs> all right, you know, first thing I was going to say, check to the dentist. Great. Check the B12. So you're doing a lot of the big steps there. Uh, do you have any acid reflux or heartburn, burping, gas, bloating? Well, uh, I do not have heartburn. Uh, my doctor thinks I could possibly have non-symptomatic acid reflux yeah. where I don't hurt, I don't right. burp, I don't yeah. have gas. He said a lot of people have that, but oh, they yeah. don't have the symptoms. Right, and that's why we talk about all the time on this show. You have to massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm uh, because the acid could be doing it. Uh, medication, do you take any weird medications? No, I don't okay. take anything at all. Okay, good, um, okay. As a matter of fact, take, I might take Excedrin for a headache occasional, but no, as far as daily it. medications, I don't. That wouldn't do it then either, Okay. Uh, I would then check the nerves in the in the neck because there's a the, the the nerves that come out of the skull. They're called the cranial nerves. Control the tongue, and if you have a uh -huh. if, if you have pinched nerves in the upper part of your neck, that could be affecting the taste as well. Because if you pinch a nerve, what's ever on the other end of that nerve is not going to work. And in your case, it could be the the tongue. So you said you headaches. Do you have headaches often? Um, I have maybe once a week uh, or once often. every two weeks. Not uh, daily. No. Yeah, still pretty often. So. Um, so my approach would be, of course, I check the neck. You're not taking any medication, so it's not that. It's no upper respiratory infection, no sinus problems, um, no cancer, because chemo can do that, too. I'm assuming there's no cancer involved, right? No. Okay, you're not, preg right. not pregnant, are you? No. All right. All right. Just <laughs> making sure, you know, Kathy, we heard about you, you know, so we got to worry. Here, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so if it's not chemical, then I, I would check the hiatal hernia, like your doctor said, the acid reflux, and then I would check the nerves to see if there's pinched nerves. Those would be my two next steps. Okay. Okay. Thanks uh, so much. Oops. Sorry. Ka Oops. Sorry, Kathy. Didn't mean to cut you off there. We had to go to a break. Folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, my website, drjoesposito.com. We post our radio shows there, videos of live lectures. If you want to order Dr. Joe Super Green, Essential Source, other things, Colon Cleanser, my books, all on the website, drjoesposito.com. A lot of articles that I've written there. Um, if you have questions and you don't get on the air, send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Hey, tell your friends about the show. I'll be right back. Hey, tell your I am so glad that you're here. We're giving you lots of good information to keep you, get you well and keep you well, because that's my job. And we're talking today about signs and symptoms you might have that could be a sign that something's seriously wrong. If you have a swollen neck, especially in the front, you notice your glands enlarge overnight, but a goiter, sometimes you sweat, wake up in the morning swollen, but is a swelling in the front of your neck. And it can be a little more insidious, which means it comes on slowly. It may indicate something called Graves' disease, which is overactive thyroid. And it's really common in women uh, between 20 and 50, but it could be in anyone, of course, men and women. Uh, especially if your eyes are starting to bulge a little bit. Remember Marty Feldman, those bulging eyes? That's usually a sign of a hyperthyroidism. So if you start to see these things, you really want to go get it checked. Because if it is a thyroid condition, many times it's something simple. You can just give somebody a lot of iodine, and that may help. You want to get them off uh, uh, the, what's called the haloids, bromine, chlorine, fluor fluorine, uh, because those things can block up the iodine receptor sites. And you get chlorine and fluorine, of course, from water, toothpaste. I would never use a fluorinated toothpaste. Um, haloids uh, like bromine you find in dough conditioners. So if you eat a lot of commercial breads, uh, uh, you know, like fast food buns and stuff like that, many times they have bromine in there. And bromine can clog up your iodine receptor sites and prevent you from utilizing iodine which can cause the thyroid to try to get bigger to work harder. The body's pretty amazing. When an organ starts to malfunction, the organ gets bigger in many cases, and so that could be a sign that there's something wrong. Uh, lots more signs and symptoms. A lot of callers, though, too. Let's, let's take a caller. Hayden, how can we make your day better? Hello, Dr. Joe. How are you? I'm very glad you called. Doing well, thank you. Thank you. Um, strange tingling sensation in my right heel when I bend over and there seems to be a little numbness there too okay and it's starting to be sharper pain it just unexpectedly when you bend down to pick something up sure there's like a it feels like pin cushions in there yep yeah that's probably a pinched nerve in the low back because when you're bending forward you're putting stress on the disc 
Um, okay. When, when you bend forward and there's back pain or shooting, it's usually a disc issue. When you lean backwards, you're jamming what's called the facets together. So a lot of times, just that simple test, we can determine, is it a facet issue or is it a disc issue? So um, sounds like a pinched nerve in the low back, and you probably want to get that fixed. Now, it could be the heel or one of the bones in the feet are out of place as well. So you want to get it checked by someone who knows how to adjust extremities as well as the low back. But either one of those, I'm going to bet you, Nicole, that's probably where it's coming from. Is, it, is x-rays and things required, or do you just um, see you or your uh, chiropractor and work on it that way? Uh, we usually like to take x-rays on patients, not everybody, not 100%, but it really protects you as well as us. And 95% of the time, we find something, we base our treatment plan on it, but about maybe 2 or 3% of the time, we find something that's out of our uh, wheelhouse and we got to get you out, especially, I mean, it doesn't sound like you're old, but many times we find a calcified aorta. And if that's the case, we got to get him out to a, a, a vascular surgeon right away. But okay. it, yeah, and the x-rays are simple and relatively inexpensive. So. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, why well, don't just give us a call. we got an office right near you. We'll, we'll go ahead and get that checked for you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hayden. Appreciate the call. Uh, let's go to Linda. How can we make your day better? Okay. Hello, Linda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Linda. I, I... I'm a retired pharmacist. Okay. And um, I had a heart attack about 14 years ago, and my— my cardiologist decided in April that I needed a nuclear stress test for my heart, <clears throat> and they used a drug called LexaScan for a stressor. <clears throat> uh huh. And since since I had that test, I've had this um, nausea and dizziness if I move my head or um, bend over or look down at my shoes or reach up on a to put a hang up dress up or something like that. I've got this dizzy, this awful dizzy feeling, and it, I don't, I don't know. Nobody seems to know what the problem is. Okay, so when you lift your arms up, you get dizzy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Or if I look down, you know, turn my eyes and look down at my shoes or something, or to pick up something. Okay, do you get dizzy when you stand up from a sitting position? Yeah, I get up real slow. Right, okay. Sounds like you have something called postural hypotension. And what that is is your adrenal glands pump out adrenaline to open up your blood vessels and pump blood up to your head. And if you're, if you're having to get up slowly, it's usually a sign of adrenal issues. So okay. uh, you might want to get me or somebody to check your adrenal glands. And if that's the case, I would get you on some adrenal supplements uh, to get the adrenals working again. I take adrenal supplements every day, have for years, because as we get older, the adrenal glands do have a tendency to poop out. But that's pretty classic yeah. what you just described. So. Yeah, and I'm I'm totally clean living. I mean, I'm careful about my food, and I, there's not a a bit of fat on my body. I uh-huh. weigh a hundred pounds. Okay, good. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, no coffee, no tea, no alcohol, no cigarettes. Good girl. So, and you look good in a yeah. bikini, I bet, right? Yeah. You, I figured you would. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it's probably adrenal glands, Linda. That's what it sounds like. Okay. Okay. Thanks well, so much. I yep. was, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Yeah. A lot of times, you, you, when folks have these symptoms, it's it's an adrenal issue. Adrenals are bags under the eyes. Postural hypotension, like Linda was just saying, uh, fatigue all the time, and so those are signs. And, and sometimes the adrenal glands just wear out. I mean, we put stress on them over our lives. Uh, Linda was a pharmacist, very high stress job, and so we do get under stress. Coffee will do it to you. So if you're doing a lot of coffee or other stimulants, that'll do it as well. So we just got to nourish those glands. And just like if you, um, if you have a garden, you want to get the tomatoes to grow, you got to nourish them to make them grow. So think about that. You're abusing yourself all day, every day with chemicals, emotional stress, physical stress, like pinched nerves, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. So that's why when patients come in our offices, we try to get the nervous system working properly, the acid reflux, the digestive system working properly, and we get them on a good diet. And it's It's great because when people do it, the biggest complaint I get is, why didn't I do this sooner? So minimum amount of nutrients is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's where I would start absolutely positively every day. I start my day with it, and some days like today, i got a busy day. I'm going to take it twice. And then start eating better foods. You know, for breakfast, I usually have a couple pieces of fruit, Super Greens, and Essential Source. For snack, I'll usually have a handful or two of nuts. Lunch, I try to do salad if I can. I try to do something raw at every meal. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I have a business luncheon. And gosh, lately, I don't know what it is, but everybody wants to take me out to lunch. And so I just pick better choices. I've, I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan now for over 30 years. 
but uh, wherever I go, it doesn't matter where, there's always food that you can eat. So just start thinking more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and a lot less alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Folks, got to go. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website is drjoesposito.com. You can order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, read a lot of articles. Also, we have a lot of stuff on our Amazon page as well if you want to order there. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, I'm glad you're here. I am Dr. Joe, and we're talking today about signs and symptoms that you don't want to ignore. It could be something more serious than what you're thinking. And we have a guest in the studio today. Elizabeth is here. Elizabeth, you have a question for us. Yes. Um, one of my classmates is having a lot of trouble focusing in class, and it's really distracting and slowing down the rest of the class. Do you have any suggestions on like what might be going on? Absolutely, we do. That's a really good question, actually, because that's a real common question. A lot of kids say, say this to me, and adults too, where people just can't focus. And when you can't focus, it's usually something, it's, it's a neurological issue. You might call it ADD, ADHD, but no one ever talks about what causes that. So, Elizabeth, that's a great question. What happens is what I find, and this is by far the most common issue, um, the stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into something called amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that helps you focus. So every person I've ever treated, adult or child, with ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, any type of emotional or emo mental disorder, I always find an undiagnosed digestive problem. And in this case, they may have the acid reflux, the burping, the gas. We pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, allowing the stomach to relax, to break the proteins into amino acids. Then the amino acids can become the neurotransmitters in the brain, and in most cases, in fact, I haven't seen it not work, the brain starts to essentially reboot itself. Then we got to get them on a good diet as well because many times these kids are, are troublemakers, so to speak. I mean, when I was a kid, we were the troublemakers or the class clowns. And so parents will give them what they want just to shut them up for a moment. So they'll say, let's go have ice cream. Let's go have this. You know, Johnny's, Johnny, you were a good boy today. We're going to give you a treat and give you some cake. So that actually makes the problem worse because sugar and stimulants can actually affect the brain as well. So if we can get them on a good diet, and like I do with just about everyone, I get them on Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which I think everybody should be taking to give your body the nutrients it needs. Then we fix the stomach. Then we get them on a, more of a plant-based, high-fiber diet. And in most cases, we get amazing results. So that was a very good question, and I, I'm sure all of us know somebody that would benefit from that information. Let's keep taking some callers. Rhonda, how can we make your day better? Yes, Dr. Joe. Good evening. Well, good evening to you. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions, actually. The first one is, how do you know how much supplements you should take with prescription medicines? I mean, if you take too many medicines, don't some of them kind of counter the others out? Yes, that's why we want to be careful when people are on certain medications. Uh, we always try to talk to them and then talk to their pharmacist usually. Pharmacists usually have a good handle on this. Uh, so, for example, if you're on birth control pills, you've got to be careful eating grapefruits. It can affect birth control pills. Right. So there are food-drug interactions, absolutely. And so the super greens, the essential source, for example, I, I, have a, I tell people if you're on blood thinners, make sure you tell your doctor that you're taking super greens and essential source so that they can monitor you and adjust the medication accordingly. I don't want you to not take the super greens and the essential source. I want to adjust the medication so you can take the super greens and the essential source. So, okay. the, so the basic start, again, super greens and essential source, and then I do a workup on all my patients, and, and then we put together a nutritional protocol for them that I think they need. Okay. okay. Second question is, about a year ago, I had a motor... Still there? I had eyes, CTs, and all this other stuff. Okay. I have chronic headaches, neck, and shoulder pain. Yeah. And I do currently see a, a chiropractor once a week. Good. Excellent. But I, al I also drive a semi-truck, and I can't distinguish whether it's progressive damage from degenerative disc disease with my neck and shoulders Sure. Or if it could just be stress from driving. Well, did you have it before the motorcycle accident? No. Okay, well, then the accident made your body weaker, most likely, and now the stress, your body's not able to handle that kind of stress. And so I'm glad okay. you're seeing a chiropractor. Uh, ask them if they know how to do cranial adjustments. We actually adjust the skull. Because a lot of times after car accidents, we have to go and actually work on the skull itself. And so a lot of times we'll get referrals from other chiropractors, neurologists, orthopedists, 
and say, Joe, I want your team of doctors to take a look at this person and see if there's something we're missing. And a lot of times there is, and then we get it fixed up from there. So, Okay. All right. All right. Thank Appreciate you so call. much. My pleasure. Eh, we, we got callers. We sure, sure do. Joanne, how can we make your day better? Hi, Dr. Joe. Thank you. Um, I, about two years ago, I went to a doctor because when I made certain movements with my mouth or ate, it caused my eye on the same side of my face to twitch. Yes. And it has gotten progressively worse, and the neurologist just wants to shoot Botox in it. I had some physical mm-hmm. therapy that helped immensely. Good. And the muscles in my back, my shoulder, up my neck, up my jaw, over the top of my head most of the time, and most days give me a headache. Okay, so it sounds like um, it's a pinched nerve. It's, it's, it's called the occiput, the top, the top bone, in, the, the, the bone in the back of your skull. Uh, a lot of patients, a lot of my patients call it the octopus. But the occiput moves out of place and can put pressure on what's called the greater occipital nerve, which wraps around in, across the top of your head into the eye area. So I've seen this happen before. It's called a blepharospasm when the eye twitches, big fancy word. But if you, the occiput and the atlas, the top bone, are out of place, that can be putting pressure on the greater occipital nerve, which can then lead to things like that. And, and it's, that's pretty classic what you just described. So. So I would get these, the occiput and the atlas, that's called the atlas is the top neck bone, checked. And if they're out of place, get those back in place. Um, again, if it was all the time, I'd say it's a nutritional deficiency. Maybe it's calcium imbalance. But it sounds like for you it's more physical and not chemical. I do do a lot of heavy lifting. I'm a small person. There I have go. a farm. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it's probably yeah. that then, yeah. But but there has to be a way to relieve it. We just purchased a hot tub. Okay. Um, I don't know how to get those muscles to release. And, and then this other issue has just gotten worse. So. Yeah. Well, if it's a pinched nerve and the bone's out of place, there's nothing that's going to put the bone back in place except putting the bone back in place. So, so chiropractic? Chiropractic care is where I would go with a case like this because I had the same thing. I always had shooting pain in the back of my head up to my eyes, and once I got chiropractic care, it went away. That's my personal story. So, yeah, it's probably that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. And, folks, if you have a question, 844 doctor Joe. Now, Here's the thing. If I don't get you on the air, send me my, your question to, to my website because sometimes as the show wraps up, we have people hanging. Take that question. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and you can send me a question. Just contact us. Send me the question. I will answer it personally for you so you don't have to worry about that. I'll get to you. If I don't get you to today, it'll be tomorrow or the next day. So we do want to get you. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, Facebook slash Dr. Joe Esposito. Um, if you want a second opinion, if you have questions, again, the website is there, drjoesposito.com. If you want to order Dr. Joe Super Greens, Dr. Joe Essential Source, my books, uh, Intestinal Cleanser, read articles, watch videos of my lectures, come out to my live lectures, check my schedule. That's all on the website, drjoesposito.com. Absolutely no charge. Also, you can order things on Amazon. We have an Amazon page as well. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Glad you're here. This is the show where we naturally teach you to get well and stay well. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's take a caller here. Marco, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. How's it going? I love uh, the show. Well, thank you. Appreciate you. And how are you doing? I just have a, uh, a quick question about my wife. She has lower back pain. Uh-huh. And um, come, stemming from a, a, a birth, um, when the, the doctor said that when she had the uh, when she had the birth, it expanded, you know, it naturally expanded her insides. And when it retracted, it didn't retract down right. So I think uh-huh. there was some issues down in the bottom of her spine. I'm trying sure. to go back to my biology. The cockatiss is that coccyx, the bone down? Coccyx, yes. It is the cockatiss, and I, I think it's just it's just not it hasn't aligned right, and it's causing some lower back pain. Real common because when the baby pushes through, the hips spread, of course, and then the baby comes out, and the hips got to go back together. And if they don't go to back together exactly perfect, which very seldom do they ever do that, you have pressure on those nerves. And so that will cause right. sacrum pain, co- coccyx pain, low back, hip pain. So it, it's probably an alignment issue because in, in my 32 years plus of practicing, I've never had seen a woman give birth where the hips weren't out of alignment. Right. So you got to get that back in place because those are the nerves that go to the back, hips, legs, knees, and ankles, but they also mm-hmm. control the colon, sex organs, and bladder. Right. So as time goes on, she might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems. You want to kind of get that fixed. That's real important. So I, I, I feel, you know, if I was Surgeon General, I would make it mandatory that all pregnant women, after they have the baby, have to go get their hips realigned. 
have to get their hips checked out after the Absolutely. baby, right? Ab- I, I would make it the law. Absolutely. It should be a law. Exactly. I'm working on Surgeon General, man. I know they just picked one, but uh, that's all right. I don't know if he's ch- well, uh, chosen yet or not. So. You got my support on that. Well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. All right, my friend. Thanks so much all for right, calling. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, folks, what we're talking about today are signs and symptoms you might have uh, that could be telling you that there's something uh, more serious going on. And if you have uh, uh, suddenly your skin starts to look like it's tan, but you haven't been out in the sun, darkening skin worth checking into especially if there's no uh, sun out there. A rare cause is called Addison's disease. It's a failure of the adrenal glands. And you heard me talk about the adrenal glands a lot. The adrenal glands produce energy. They produce hormones and they produce anti-inflammatories. And if there's an issue with with the adrenal glands, it can make you tired, sick, achy. And if you have it, the good news is the adrenal glands, we can usually treat them. Of course, there's the medical approach where you can give drugs. Uh, My approach would be getting you off the things that stress the adrenal glands, especially the stimulants, coffees, teas, chocolates. And then I get you on adrenal supplements. But I also want to check the nerves in the mid-back because the nerves in the mid-back, kind of right below the bra strap, if you can imagine that area, that's the nerve that goes directly into the kidneys and the adrenal glands. And so we want to get that working. That, that is, according to Didi Palmer, the founder of chiropractic, that's the most misaligned vertebrae in the body, the 12th thoracic vertebrae. So many times I'll see that, and then we'll see kidney and, and adrenal issues. Women that are large-chested, if you have a D-cup size or larger, you can be more susceptible to diabetes, according to a recent Canadian study. So if you slim down... It's okay. It usually resolves that issue. If you have chicken skin, permanent goosebumps all over your body, uh, that can be uh, an, an issue as well. They're usually harmless, but if they bother you, try using a soap-free body wash and plenty of moisturizer. Now, what I use for soap, I use something called a, a Bra- a Dr. Bronner's soap. It's a, called a Castile soap. And Castile soap is not a soap. It's not a detergent like most soaps are. It's actually an oil base. Because likes dissolve likes. So if you use an oil base, it'll help keep your skin clean. And the thing that is really cool is it rinses off so easily. And if there's ever a situation where I have to use commercial soap, I'm just amazed how the soap just doesn't rinse away. When the Castile soap just rinses right off, and it's actually moisturizing to the skin, as opposed to a lot of soaps which are actually drying to the skin. So that's why I have Castile soap all over my house. Uh, in my shower, uh, my, my kitchen sink, my bathroom sinks, because I, li- I like it too. And has, it has nice uh, smells as well. They use essential oils like peppermint, orange. Uh, they have s- scent free, of course. So that's kind of nice. Love handles. How many people have love handles? Raise your hand. Yay. A lot of folks have love handles. Now, it's tempting you want to just suck in your gut. But if you have a big gut or love handles, it can actually triple your risk of dementia. Which also ma- and it also makes you vulnerable to diabetes and heart disease. So as much as we might not like the love handles and it, it's not a, an attractive thing, there's also a health risk involved. Diabetes, dementia, heart disease. So it's really important to get that belly fat off because if you have it, you can see it on the outside, it's also getting into the organs. And fat around the organs can cause the organs to malfunction. So do you like eating your breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas? I do. Is it good for you? On many reasons, no. But if you have that belly roll and those love handles, that could be a sign that there's something much more serious going on. Red palms could be an early sign of liver disease. You probably feel sick and lethargic anyway, but you might want to check into that too. And you can always get your liver checked. You know, there's blood work you can do, and the blood work will tell you what's going on. This was an interesting one. Long ring finger. An index finger that's shorter than your ring finger means you're exposed to high levels of testosterone when you were in mommy's womb. Now, this can give you a lot of drive and ambition. So a lot of people say, oh, they're so driven. Well, it could be because of testosterone exposure. But it can also make you more susceptible to arthritis of the knees, according to a study at the University of Nottingham. Building up your muscles around the legs helps support your knees. The knee is not a good joint. When I die and go to heaven, I hope, I'm going to have a long talk with the boss because there's a couple of things I'm not happy with. And one of the things I'm not happy with is the knee joint. It's not a good joint. It's not stable, and it's injured easily. It wears out pretty quickly. And here's something I want you to consider, too. I didn't even have this on my show notes, but if you have osteoarthritis, that's when the joints wear out. But you'll say, well, I have arthritis. Okay. Did anyone ever tell you why you have arthritis? Well, no, they never did. And the reason is, maybe they don't know, osteoarthritis is mechanical. What that means is if the bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they wear out. 
And as a chiropractor, people come to us, of course, for neck pain and back pain, car accidents, sports injuries, knee problems. But when we adjust them and realign them, it's not just about unpinching the nerves and relieving the pain. It's about taking the stress off the joints so they don't wear out. And so every now and then we have a patient come in who knows more than I do, of course, and they'll say, well, I don't need to keep the treatment plan you gave me. Once I get a few adjustments and I feel better, I'm gone. And I said, okay, but I promise you, if those joints are not put back in place properly, they will wear out. And sure enough, 5, 10, 20 years later, sometimes they come on back in. We take some new x-rays. The joints are all worn out. And then they say, Dr. Joe, you were right. So when you come into our offices, we're not making up a treatment plan. We're giving it to you because this is what you need. Folks, if you're just tuning in, you missed an amazing show. The good news is I'm going to archive this on my website along with hundreds of hours of other shows, drjoesposito.com. If you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, if you have questions, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Also, we have an Amazon page. You can order from there too, folks. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.